Hey howdy hey friends and neighbors, Scott here, and today we're going to look at lilies, both uh, a tr an example of a true lily, it's a good opening, good solid opening. Today we're going to look at lilies, uh, both the lily family, the true lilies, and also some uh, lilies in name only. I have a lot of traffic going by, that's nice. So let's start talking about the actual lily family. Alright, so these guys right here are lilies. These are tiger lilies. Members of the lily family have three true petals and then three sepals. And the sepals, which are behind the petals, are usually just the same color and the same size as the petal. So for a shorthand, we call them tepals. That's just a thing. So six tepals, which is, you know, petals and sepals. And they have parallel veins, so the, the leaf veins run alongside each other. Now some lilies are edible, some lilies are not edible. So you have to go species by species. Uh, it's not like the mustards or the, um, the uh, alliums or whatnot. They're mostly poisonous to your pets, so uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feed your pets any part of a lily. This particular one is a tiger lily, which is kind of funny because the spots would actually make it more like a leopard lily. I think that's actually one of the common names. So tiger lily, Lilium lancifolium. Let's make sure we get the scientific name in there because uh, there are probably quite a few lilies that get called tiger lilies that aren't you know, botanically a tiger lily. Here's how we can identify it. So it'll have this main, uh, main central stalk with many flowers branching off of it. Uh, they're usually more orange than this, but this is fine. Um, the petals and the, well, the, the tepals, the petals and sepals, will be strongly recurved. See how they curve back? And the flowers tend to droop down. So yeah, they have these kind of purple-brown spots. Uh, at the end of the stamens, you're going to have these nice purple spots here, very distinct. Uh, they will form bulbils, which are little bulbs, where the leaf meets the stem. That happens a little later on. And pretty much everything on here is edible. Um, you can eat the petals, you can eat the leaves, you can do stuff with the roots. I haven't really played with eating the bulbs, but um, they can be boiled or, or pickled or you can make a starch out of them. I haven't, I haven't played with that. Uh, the flowers are fine. You can put them in salads and soups or a omelet or a stir fry. <laughs> I'm going to put a recipe on my Patreon page for tangy tiger lily tarts if you're interested in that. It's mainly just, it's really just a tart uh, with tiger lily on the top. Let me just pull some grass weeds while I'm out here because I don't want grass to take this area over. But that's these guys. Now let's go take a look at a couple of lilies that aren't true lilies. Now these are called canna lilies. They're not true lilies, and um, they're not blooming now, so I can't show you that. I'll find a picture and put it up. But canna lilies, as far as I know, they're all edible. Um, you might want to double check me since uh, I'm just going off the top of my head here. I know that some varieties are grown specifically to eat the leaves, and some varieties are grown to eat the roots, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that all of the uh, varieties you know, technically have edible parts on, on, on both. These are uh, real drought hardy, so if you live in a dry area, these are easy to grow to, uh, you know, do a, make a survival garden or a, uh, you know, gorilla garden, a secret garden. Um, it's easy just to plunk these in the ground and forget about them. Now, if you live in a more moist area, <laughs> just walk a few steps over here. They're both working where I am. These tiger lilies, they like moist ground better, and they're another one that's easy to grow. So, for your survival garden, Canna lilies if you're in a drier area, tiger lilies if you're in a moist area, or uh, if you have you know a decent amount of mulch, I guess it doesn't really matter, and then elderberries all around. And now for another um, so-called lily that's not botanically a lily, we have the day flower, Hemorocallus fulva. Hey guineas, they think that I have food. Many day lilies are, are edible, but um, they may not all be. This one is, this is an easy one to identify. So, here's, here's how we do this. They have the parallel leaf veins, like a blade of grass. They're all basal, meaning they come out of the ground. Um, so, strap-like leaves with uh, parallel veins. The flowers, again, six tepals. It'll be orange on the outside, yellow in the middle, with red where those two meet, so a ring of red. And you'll have one flower bloom per day, See, there's a bunch of them under here waiting to go. So one of these will open up each day, and we'll have a bunch. And um, this is, a, this is a, a sterile variety. They produce a sterile seed, if, if any at all. They produce by underground rhizome action. 
they are really popular at old homesteads. It's an old classic type of flower. So um, they are really abundant and easy to find uh, if you know where to look. A lot of times they'll grow at the edges of roads in ditches um, and they can be called ditch lilies. Although you gotta watch out for common names because tiger lilies are also called ditch lilies sometimes. So there are probably a lot of ditch lilies. You don't want the kind with spots. Those might be edible too, but they're, they're not this plant. So if you're looking for Hemorocallus fulva, the uh, original old you know, home decorate, do, decorative daylily, that's this one. Look at that, isn't that pretty? Okay, so what can you eat on this thing? Pretty much everything. You can eat the flowers, you can eat the unopened buds, you can eat the roots. Although you want the younger ones, they'll be more whitish. The older they get, they'll turn more of a brown. And they're not toxic, they're just too rough. <laughs> they're just too rough to eat. The young shoots, uh, you can eat those. Um, basically anything that's not gotten too tough, you can eat. Now the classic way to eat these is to uh, batter them and fry them. You can, the the uh, unopened bud is more more common, but you can do the flower too. I think they're okay, but uh, I don't know what all the big fuss is about. Personally, I think they're better as a stir-fry ingredient. Uh, just as a caution, some people are allergic to these. Uh, they are also laxative, so, you know, go slow and find your limit. I want to see if I can find one that's a different variety. Look at that overgrown mess in there. There's a pomegranate. Goji berries, red buds. I have a lot of edible things just right here. I have a lot of edible things just everywhere. Maple leaves, you can batter and fry maple leaf. It's pretty good, it's a neat fall treat. Oh, be nice to that little brown chicken. Yarrow, we gotta do a yarrow video sometime. Passion flower, those things are great. Uh, you can eat the young shoots. So uh, I've read, I think this was at uh, the Green Dean wrote this, that if you eat too many of the young shoots, they're hallucinogenic. I've never, I've never given that a try. Um, you can let me know how that goes. The roots will be a, a tuber, by the way. They, they form a tuber, by the way. And uh, seeing as how these have <laughs> survived, you know, at old homesteads and managed to survive and, and spread, I mean, I live at an old homestead and they've spread all over the place. Uh, this is another easy one to grow, too. They seem to like wet conditions a little more, but um, it gets plenty of dry over here in the summer. I don't water, uh, well, I mean, I water now. Um, there were year, years and years I didn't water anything back here, and they thrived, so I don't think that's too critical. So there you go, that's three lilies, one of them an actual lily and two not botanically lilies. Hope you enjoyed that little look. Uh, I think next time, I think we're gonna look at alliums. I've talked about those before. Um, I've got some that are blooming that I wanna show you uh, just for demonstration purposes. So until next time, keep your eyes out for plants and zombies and, uh, and for guineas that might peck your toes. And uh, happy foraging. <laughs>